I played 100 Days of Graveyard Keeper. Thank you to everyone who voted on the poll. The full gameplay was actually streamed live too. I've left the playlist in the description if you want the full experience after this, and make sure you have your notifications on so you don't miss future streams either. It was a lot of fun being able to experience this together with some of you. I haven't got most of the DLCs active just yet, it's only the Breaking Dead one that comes with the game anyway. For those, I'm waiting for the next video. This'll just let me get my head around the vast amounts of content that's already in the base game. I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed making this video, and I'd love if you could please hit the like and subscribe button. It's free, and it goes a long way to support the channel. Please do bear in mind I am a noob, and I play with a mindset of exploration rather than efficiency, so let me know in the comments your best tips of what I could have done better. I'm ready to jump in, and I hope you are too, so let's begin. On day one, I woke up in this strange little house having just had a vision. I think I'm dead, but I don't really have time to ponder that thought because I need to find Jerry. I walked out to the back of my house and dug up a dirt pile to find a bouncing skull. Funny little lad this is, and turns out this is, in fact, Jerry. Well, I thought he was, and it did take him a minute to remember. We took a little walk together, or whatever that is, and we found this donkey who gave me my first blueprint of an art piece that I'll end up just forgetting about from here on out. This donkey had somehow learned to speak English, and he's brought us a fresh corpse. Yummy. He went on a little rant about his working conditions, but then he just dumped the body on the floor and trotted away. And look, here comes Jerry. On the advice of a talking skull, I grabbed that body and took it over to the morgue, which was kinda giving more dungeon vibes. Fitting for my next horrifying task, slicing off some meat, but it did take some minor bullying to get me to actually do it. Even more disturbing were the recipes I learned as a result. I brought the deflesh body to my ugly new graveyard and picked out a spot for them to rest. Then it was time to bury them, just in time for the bishop's arrival. He wasn't best pleased to see me here apparently 30 years late, which was as much a surprise for me too, but he was quick to comment on how much of a dump this place is. So using some craftable items, I'll now have to raise my graveyard quality to at least 5. I can also repair some of the graves too, but I'll need to unlock some new recipes with tech points from various activities. Red is from crafting, green is from nature, and blue is from knowledge. You'll learn more about these as we go through the game. These tech trees are pretty extensive too. Getting my graveyard up to 5 points I thought wouldn't be so bad, except our starting point is minus 29. Bit shocking, but I know we can do this. I collected some repair kits and tools from a nearby chest, then ignored the graveyard for now and made haste to the Dead Horse Tavern to meet Haradric. I asked him about the burial certificate I just got, and this is where I can sell them for cash. I also asked about trading that meat with him, but apparently I can only sell approved meat, which is usually marked with a royal meat stamp. That's something I'll have to figure out how to get, but he told me this was a result of some previously inappropriate meat, which sounds very familiar. Later, I'll be able to buy one from my church mailbox, but they're expensive, so we're a long way off. Before I left, he asked me to give a letter to Kresvold the blacksmith, so off I went to find him. Not the friendliest of greetings, but I sort of introduced myself and handed over that letter which asked him to get rid of some slimes. As expected, that task now fell to me, and Creswell gave me a broken sword and an energy potion to help with the task. A quick repair with the whetstone and the sword was as good as new. Then it took me an embarrassing amount of time to work out how to swing it. I needed chat's help with this one, but once I figured it out, it was easy enough, and some of the rewards included some jelly recipes which use that slime. I came back to my graveyard to remove the dead bushes and do my first bit of foraging, then recovered my energy in bed for the night. I woke up on day two to this weird ghost dude by my bedside. Complaints about the graveyard from live people weren't enough. I've also got dead people on my case. This guy was upset about a mean neighbour. He wanted me to dig up that bully and chuck him in the river, and to do that, he gave me this exclamation licence so I don't get in trouble. In the future, I can buy more from the church mailbox if I need them. I decided to explore my cellar today, which, like the graveyard, was a complete mess. But I could also hear that someone was nearby. Some dude trying to get past a gate. I don't care about him at the moment because he can't get into my house just yet, thankfully being kept safe by these blockages I need to repair. I cleared out all the trash from down here, and actually, a lot of it was bags of flour which I'll later be able to use to bake bread, but for now, I wanted to focus on removing the graveyard bully, so I used that exhumation permission, dug the dude up, and sent him sailing, but I was caught in the act by Jerry, so I explained everything that went on. I got a bit of a bollocking, but he advised me that I should probably just burn these in the future. Noted. I used some repair kits to fix up the graves before clearing some space in my yard for future crafting machines. Then I made my first batch of dough and got some bread going. In Graveyard Keeper, energy can be restored by food, potions, or sleeping, and you don't actually have to go to sleep every night because there isn't a pass out time, but I still sleep a lot at the moment since I don't have a steady supply of sustenance. Yorick the Ghost was back again on day 3 to tell me about sins and deeds of the corpses. Sins cancel out good deeds, which is what determines the quality rating when we bury it. 
if a body has too many sins or red skulls, putting loads of decorations on the grave won't help it very much. Removing parts on the autopsy table can help some, but with the worst of people, maybe we should keep these out of our graveyard. To make anything, we're going to need crafting stations in our yard, and I started with the sawhorse. Not sure how this works because it's only made with sticks, but we'll roll with it. You also have to spend energy to actually build it, which makes things feel more immersive for me. And here's what I'm able to craft so far. Of course, to craft with wood, I need to chop some trees, pick up the log that drops, and carry it home. It does also need to go into the storage, which clearly took a minute for me to figure out. For some reason, I then drop the crafting and use my repair kits in the graveyard. You're gonna see a lot of this behaviour, I do have ADHD after all. Once I was fresh out of repair kits, I checked out the tech to make more wooden ones and returned to gathering materials whilst coming into the house to make bread now and again. As the sun was rising on day 4, I crafted my first grave markers, one of which went to that body we buried earlier to help raise the quality. I then unlocked the woodworking tech and worked on another batch of bread. At this point, I hadn't figured out that you could craft more than one lot at once. I'll get there, eventually. My next order of business was building that carpenter's bench and taking a peek at what we can craft here. This included those repair kits, but I don't yet have the materials for these, so I investigated this farmy looking area which was in fact a garden. To be able to use it, I need to speak to Heradric, and I wanted to sprint straight over there, but the donkey dropped off another corpse which I needed to tend to before it decomposed. I didn't have the tech points to unlock anything new, so for this person, I only removed their flesh. And thanks to that body we dug up the other day, there's already a hole waiting for us. I had a spare grave marker ready too. With that taken care of, I went to the tavern, but before I had a chance to speak, Heradric thanked me for my help with those slimes, and gave me a beer on the house. As for the garden, it was actually seized by the merchant, who we haven't met yet, but it's laid unused for years. He gave me permission to use it, but I'll need to speak with the merchant too, and with that, I got the blueprint for a garden bed to grow crops. The merchant only comes once a week, so I'll have to remember to go see him. I did also sell my burial certificates, so I was no longer completely broke. I got home the dawn of day 5, which was when I claimed the garden area and set up my first few garden beds. I collected the freshly baked bread from my oven and set up another lot, but when I stepped back outside, Jerry was bouncing around in front of me, alerting me that the Inquisitor was around. Whoever that is. I actually needed to talk to Jerry because I had that beer for him, which earned me some friendship points, but he still seemed unsatisfied. I asked him again how to get home, and he just said to use the portal on Witch Hill. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. He also gave me some pointers on where to find more information on the portal, suggesting the library and the astrologer. This is starting to feel less easy peasy lemon squeezy and more difficult difficult lemon difficult. I suppose I should start with actually visiting Witch Hill, and this is where I first peeped the Inquisitor. I think the strange fella they're referring to is me. Yup. I introduced myself as the new graveyard keeper, and we took a walk together whilst he spewed some rubbish about the rising of a dark coal and burning witches or whatever. I'm not really interested in all that, I just want to know about the portal, but to get that info, I probably need to become his friend first, which obviously meant he has some tasks for me. Annoyingly, he wouldn't tell me what they were today, I'll have to come back next week. That is something to note too, most NPCs do only visit once a week on a certain day. For now, since I was halfway to the village, I went and asked the blacksmith about metal ore, and he directed me to the swamp across the broken bridge, gave me the iron bar recipe I needed, and the tech to be able to gather the ore. I did also buy a few nails whilst I was there out of sheer impatience so I can start crafting stuff, and when I got back I had a corpse waiting for me. I definitely made it worse removing the meat, going from two deeds to one, but that's fine. Nothing a bit of decor can't fix, at least I thought. Now it just needs a fence, but before I do that, I need more repair kits, except I ran out of energy crafting so off to bed I went. On day 6, I queued up a few decorations and repair kits and got them crafting so I could do up some of my graves. This got me up to negative 2 by the time I ran out of stuff. I then realised it's astrologer day today so I spent most of this day on the hunt for him, and given the hour I probably found him in the nick of time this week. The first thing he did was ask me to bring him a skull, and I don't think he means Jerry so we're gonna have to figure out another source. I found out I could steal the apples on my way out, then in exploring the area I was drawn to this guy by the smell of kebabs. I was happy to hear he'll teach me the recipe but I'll have to bring him some fish fillets first. I don't even have a rod yet, and I didn't want to fish tonight either, so I ignored that and went home via the tavern so I could sell the burial certificate. I started day 7 gathering iron ore, which made me think I should build the iron stockpile. Little did I know, this was a complete waste of time and resources at this point in the game. The next corpse had arrived, so I unlocked more tech in the anatomy tab and proceeded to remove the skull for this one for the astrologer, then buried our new headless friend. My next project would be the furnace, but I was still short of materials. I worked on that for a bit till I got low on energy, then I baked some more bread and went to bed. 
The next morning, I gathered enough stone to build that furnace, which will of course need fuel. Firewood is better than sticks, and for that, we need a chopping spot and a good quantity of wood. Good thing we're surrounded by several trees, and this ended up occupying my entire day, but it was all worth it to get my first iron bar smelting. On day 9, I went to meet the merchant who was already here very early in the morning. This lad appears to have the hiccups or something, so I tried to give him a scare and the immediate reaction was that I confused him, but actually it did seem to help. With those now cured, I thought now was the best time to ask him about the garden, and it turns out he'd completely forgotten about it. He still ended up asking me to pay 10 gold for the land, which I don't see us getting anytime soon. So we made a deal, which was for me to deliver him a batch of crops to start off with, and as a little side quest, he asked me to also fetch him some hiccup grass for the next time he gets the hiccup. That can wait though, because right now I wanted to focus on acquiring some seeds to plant, so I went round to each vendor I could find, and thankfully, the seed vendor was not too far away. I spent most of my money on at least a few of each seed, and ran straight home because the donkey had left us another corpse. Looking at the skulls of this one, I decided not to remove anything and just bury this person as is. Finally that night, I managed to get my first crops down. I'm so excited to be farming again. A lot of day 10 was spent wandering around aimlessly. What was I doing? I had a quick look up which hill, but there was nothing there, so I left to go to the Dead Horse Tavern and sell my burial certificates for a bit of cash. I used that cash to buy some more simple iron parts from Kresvold because I was in desperate need. I really wanted to use these to make a wooden anvil so I can make my own simple iron parts from now on. On day 11, I got some more iron smelting before removing the iron stockpile because I was running out of yard space and I found out I don't need this yet. It is nice to get even a tiny amount of materials back. In its place, I built a stone cutter so that I can make more stone repair kits, but these require clay to make, a resource I hadn't come across yet. The chat helped me out as to where I could find some, but I didn't have the tech yet, and I couldn't find it in my tech tree either. I'll need to wait for a later point for this, so for the rest of this day, I gathered wood to craft more wood repair kits. I was repairing graves into the wee hours of day 12, and also added some more grave fences to improve those quality ratings, which meant I hit the target quality of 5 before we even hit dawn. Just need to wait for tomorrow now for the next steps. I walked all the way out east to meet with the astrologer and handed over a fresh skull to show him I'm a friend because I need his info on that portal. He'd not heard about it for years, and apparently the last graveyard keeper was obsessed with this portal too. Before he disappeared, he'd found a way to activate the portal, and I might be able to find more information in his diary if I can find it. This key, which is for the church cellar, might help me out. On my way back home, I bought some more seeds to plant, because as you can see, I'm expanding this farm slowly but surely, but then I ran out of energy whilst working on some firewood, so I headed to bed. On day 13, I gave the bishop the good news about the graveyard, and here I was pronounced the official keeper of this holy place and prior of this church. And this is the said church. It's not much, but it's a start. This place needs some sprucing up too. My job here is to deliver a weekly sermon, and the better quality the church, the more people will show up, and the more it will benefit me. This is where faith gets introduced, a very valuable resource. You'll be seeing how much of this we'll be needing very soon. You get a casual prayer to begin with, and you can make better ones later which need a higher church quality, but for now, may the force be with you. I got a total of 3 faith for that, then checked out the church basement which was an absolute dump, but will, over time, become very important for us as we unlock more stuff to build here. And hey look, loot! I spent some time clearing the place up, then checked out the study table because I knew this is how we get blue tech points, but to study stuff we need science points, and to get those we need paper. I don't have paper, and I was mistaking this tech unlock with the one below, so I was confused about needing blue points to unlock the thing that I need to get blue points, and uh, yeah, my brain was very tangled today. I wasted the rest of this day running around trying to figure it out, and finally realised my error close to midnight. Now we have a whole new workbench to try out. I worked through the night on some complex iron parts which I'll need for lots of things, including that church workbench which I gathered the materials to build on day 14. The church workbench is where we can make paper, which, looking at these recipes, we'll be making from human skin. Ew. For that, I need a new corpse. And here was the donkey with another, but this time he has some words for me. He didn't feel like he was being paid adequately for his services, which was fair, and to show just how miffed he was, he left a very pungent present in the path. I ignored his outburst for now and skinned this new corpse, which very much ruined the body. I didn't know what to do with it just yet, so I left it on the table for now to turn that skin into pigskin paper, and then convert that into clean paper, somehow. This I can then use to get those science points, and now I could get working on those blue points. Studying does also cost faith, which I don't have much of, so now you see why it's so important, and this isn't its only use either. 
Looks like body parts give quite a lot of points, so that's what I used this week's faith on. I used my shiny new blue points to unlock writing. This will help towards better prayers. My main aim will be the combo prayer, which boosts both faith and money gain from my weekly service, so I made sure to unlock that too. On day 15, I sent that nasty body on a sailing trip, harvested all of my crops, and replanted what I could, but now I had all the crops for the merchant who was in town today. I proved I was someone to rely upon for business, but to make it all official, I need a trade license which I can only get from the church mailbox. I thought I might be able to sell some of my excess crops to him, but these are not to his standards, so home I went to find Donkey waiting for me for a chat again, or more of a protest. Donkey was on strike because he deserves to be paid some carrots, so until I bring him some, I won't be getting any more corpses. I listen to these demands because I'm not about these supply chain issues, so in addition to actually being paid, he needs some oil for the squeaky wheels, and a day off on Sunday to rest his hooves. Until I meet all of his demands, he's just going to stand here holding that corpse hostage because there are no other donkeys to bring me bodies. I built the carrot box right away, but annoyingly, I was one carrot short so donkey will have to wait. On day 16, I built the writing desk in my church basement, which is where I'll be creating our new prayer. The main thing I'm missing now though is the pen and ink, so I'll have to sort it later. For today, I just gathered more materials towards improving the church. On day 17, I added my first decorations to the church, and I needed to make some more planks to build stuff, but I ran out of energy, so I slept away most of the day, though I did manage to gather everything I needed to build a couple more benches that night. I also unlocked some better tools, and managed to get a better axe and shovel before running out of iron. On day 18, I cleared up some of Creswold's yard whilst waiting for him to rise for the day. I just struggled to stay still, okay? I wanted to find out if I could sell my old weapons to Creswold, and in fact, I could. I wandered through some other parts of the village whilst I was there and found my first honey, then walked all the way out to the lighthouse to speak to the astrologer, forgetting he's waiting for that diary from me, and on my way home, I wanted to give Dig some honey, but I didn't have enough yet. I thought I needed to do this to trade, but this is not the case. I needed to buy some oil from him to bring to our donkey friend for his wheels. On day 19, I had some crops to harvest which meant I now had enough carrots to pay the donkey, and I think he was pleased with this progress. He finally dropped me that body which somehow hadn't completely decomposed, but I removed some parts and dropped them in the newest hole. The bishop was here, and we had a chat about his new soup kitchen, but he wanted my help with some clay pots for it. He's just doing it for his personal image, but I'll be happy to help the hungry, and this means we've unlocked the ability to gather clay. I can now gather sand too, which I remember seeing before here, so now I can salvage paper from the old books I got from clearing up this basement. I then realised what time it was and quickly got in my Sunday sermon before it was too late, which, despite not quite meeting the church quality needs for it, it was still successful. As soon as the churchgoers left, I was right outside to gather some clay. Coming into day 20, I made myself a better pickaxe, but needed a nap to finish it off. I could appreciate my new pickaxe more in the daylight, then I made another shovel because I forgot that I already did this. I built myself a potter's wheel and found out I was missing water for the bowls. Thankfully, we have a well in our yard. Then I got to making, and seeing loads of them pop out like that was kinda therapeutic. These went in a chest for now because I won't need these till next Sunday, and this was just in time for a fresh corpse to arrive. For this one, I just removed the blood. I now know you aren't really supposed to bury bodies of this quality, but I haven't really taken this in yet, so just bear with me. It does get a bit better over time. On day 21, I got the bare graves decorated to increase that quality a little, then ran out of energy after making some stone repair kits with my new clay. I started day 22 making use of these to fix up the graves I couldn't before. I spend a bit of time confused by not being able to place these wall candelabras. If you didn't know, these need the next church upgrade to be able to place them, so I don't really like the fact these come up in the menu before that point, but at least for now, I can place more on the floor. I had a look at this broken bridge here, which needed way easier materials than I thought, so I gathered those up and made a very makeshift repair, crossing over to explore the new land. For now, I just found a block path and a buttload of iron nodes, but I was also aware of a little maze here which I didn't feel like navigating just yet, so instead, I went to bed. On day 23, I checked out which hill again, but I was here way too early. Rather than just wait around, I went to the church basement to study the new body parts because I'd not used last Sunday's faith yet. This gave me more blue points, but you can also get the red and green points here too. I unlocked the tech for some glass stuff today, this will come in useful later. Then I had a quick look into what it will take to make some other prayers, because it will be better than our casual one. I then realised the entire day passed and was disappointed to see the Inquisitor leaving for the night. No, don't leave! Don't leave! No! Oh. I continued up the main road to the tavern to sell my burial certificates so that at least I didn't leave home for nothing. 
On day 24, I stopped putting off the maze and struggled my way through it, finding some hiccup grass along the way. I also found a place to build a shortcut, which was a decent indication that I was close to where I needed to be, which was this adorable little witch's hut, complete with its very own witch, who wasn't quite so adorable. She told me about her little predicament, that she just woke up unable to remember anything but had a note with a recipe for the cure. Unfortunately though, her cauldron is missing. I had the choice of either making her the potion or bringing her the cauldron and ingredients. The idea of alchemy in this game was pretty overwhelming to me so I know which option I'll be picking, but this is where I unlock some of the alchemy tables. She also asked me to bring her a silver star pumpkin. I've not even seen pumpkin seeds yet, so I was excited that there might be more crops in the game. It took me most of the day to find my way back to the bridge, and I did want to speak to the astrologer to buy some ink from him, but once again, I was too late for the weekly visit. <gasps> no, don't you dare. Can I talk to you please, 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 please? No, not again. <laughs> I stole some apples whilst I was there, then passed by the dead horse because my chat reminded me that this teleport stone exists and I could have avoided today's disappointment this way. For two silver, this item is very much worth it, but because of my full inventory, I had to part with all my firewood to be able to take it home. I tested it out right away, and I love how quick and convenient this thing is, but it's worth bearing in mind it does have a short cooldown. Day 25 began with some woodwork, then I brought the bowls over to the bishop who is back at the church today. He immediately commented on how ugly my hard work was which was rude, but then he started talking about the potential of upgrading my church to a big church, which will help give more faith and money. To do this, I need to improve the quality of this existing church, and the graveyard here too. My new goal is 30 for the graveyard and 20 for the church. He also separately asked me for some quality fish fillets. Bold of him to assume I know how to fish. Today I reached 30 friendship with the bishop, which means I unlocked the ability to buy the meat stamp to sell the meat, but at 50 silver this is going to be a long while off. So for now, I just got on with my weekly prayer before trying to make my way through the maze again to fix the shortcut bridge. But then I realised I forgot to bring nails. I came home to smelt some more iron, then went to bed. On day 26, I wanted to sell my old tools to Kresvold. He happily took my pickaxe, but he didn't seem to want the shovel. I thought this was because it had some wear on it, so I sharpened it up, but this didn't work either. No idea why. Maybe he was just in a bad mood, I don't know. Now I have to store this thing somewhere. He also gave me no option to ask about the cauldron for Clotho the Witch, so I left to take a closer look at this egg basket, and it turns out we can buy stuff here, so now I know where to get feathers. I carried on east and found my first sand pile, another resource we'll be needing for several things. Then I wanted to try fishing for the first time here without realising I'm totally rodless. I stormed back over to the village thinking I've just forgotten it at home and stole some more honey from this tree here and even went looking for another because I still hadn't given Dig the honey he asked for so I might as well chip away at that quest. Day 27 was horribly foggy. I chopped some more trees because we'll be needing an abundance of wood, then checked my tech and recipes for a cauldron because Kresvald didn't say anything to me. I couldn't find it, so I ignored that for now and brought the hiccup grass to the merchant. I was relieved that fog cleared up by then. The merchant had his snack, but instead of the hiccups, he lost his taste. He couldn't even taste the spicy cookie he had on him, and yeah, honestly, I would be horrified too. Looks like this is actually a curse, and he asked me to consult with Clotho for a cure, but I doubt she'll help me before I help her, so I checked with Creswold again, who had nothing to say about the matter. But now, I shifted my focus to fishing. By this point, I realised I never actually had a rod, so I bought one from the lighthouse dude without paying attention to his dialogue first. I did speak to him after though, and he taught me a few fish-related cooking recipes, some of which can give us fishing buffs. This is also when I found out I could have just hunted for 6 moths to get the fishing rod instead of spending my hard earned silver, but oh well. Forgetting I had the teleport stone, I walked all the way home. On day 28, I got through the maze yet again because I now had the materials to build the bridge. This will make the journey infinitely easier because this bridge skips the majority of the maze. I also wanted to try my hand at fishing today, but I didn't realise there's not a sound when a fish bites, and my brain didn't feel warmed up enough to pay close enough attention to the bobber, so I'll try again another time. But now, I came back to the basement to salvage paper from those old books, now that I had some sand, and also made some more out of pigskin paper. Then, it was back to gathering wood, this time from all these stumps because otherwise these trees will not regrow, and I very skillfully rolled it all the way home in a line like this. <laughs> so satisfying. On day 29, I finally caught the Inquisitor on Witch Hill. He asked me to help the Holy Inquisition with some firewood and flyers to prepare for their witch burning ceremonies. It's a simple enough task that I'll hopefully remember to do soon, but at this moment I just want to tend to my crops and stock up on stone, because on day 30 I made some gravestones. I remembered today to visit the astrologer at the lighthouse, and teleporting there saved me so much time. 
I only wanted to buy some ink from him today, but he literally won't let me until I find that diary. Another time, I guess. Since I was nearby, I handed five honey pots to Dig. Hi. Ding dong, bing bang bong, I have your honey. I couldn't remember why I needed to do this, but I got a cake recipe that I'll completely forget about after today. Ooh, cake. I dropped some carrots off to the box before gathering some sticks, then I wanted to prep some more flitch when I ran out of energy so it's back to bed for me. I want to save my food for another time. On day 31, I repaired another grave with a fresh repair kit and replaced a couple of grave markers with better gravestones. With the church quality now at 10, my prayer had 100% chance of success and I could definitely see we were getting a bit more in donations than the week before. With my new faith, I wanted to study for more blue points, but this key also needs some instructions. More on that later. I just got myself some red points instead, then decided on repairing the corpse hatch so the bodies don't just lay on the floor outside. The morning of day 32 was for stocking up on wooden materials, mostly for the red points to unlock wooden beams, but those planks will definitely not go to waste because I used these to immediately build the final two benches in my church. I made some more complex iron parts for various projects, but needed a nap to get the job done. Then that evening, I was surprised to find a body that hadn't gone down the hatch, which confused me for a minute. I took it into the morgue where Jerry wanted to chat to me about getting some helpers, and apparently there was an old one chained to a wall somewhere in this enormous basement that I should check on. However, under no circumstances should I unchain him. I ruined this body by removing some parts that I probably shouldn't have. Well, I say some parts, I actually removed everything, so I guess all that's left is a pile of organs? Growth. I still opted to bury and decorate this one, but I did run out of grey fences at this point. On day 33, I worked on those iron parts I left behind earlier so I could build myself a circular saw. This meant I could make my first wooden beams, which I wanted to use to clear this blockage in the morgue, but I was missing the wood wedges, so I made those up which used most of my energy. So I was going to rest for the night, but the donkey brought a new corpse. I should probably work on that before it rots in the rain, then I ended up choosing to fix a different blockage in the cellar instead, but I ran out of energy again, so back to bed I go. On day 34, I sliced up some meat to cook since I won't be able to sell it anytime soon. I cleared out the blockage I originally wanted, then realised there's a second one we need to clear to be able to access the church basement. But that did remind me I never finished the one we started yesterday. I wanted to do this to access the locked gate, but I was baffled here because the dialogue kept saying I need a key. I had a key! My chat did eventually let me know that we need help from a visitor, but I do wish the game at least hinted at this. I studied more stuff since I was low on blue points so I could unlock some better grave decorations. Then I realised I also had gained access to this long tunnel and one of the exits comes out in the village. With the teleport stone, I'm probably not going to use this. I resurfaced back at home to make some stone grave fences, which gives me blue points for crafting them, and with a bit more crafting, I needed some sleep. I woke up in the very early hours of day 35 to clear this blockage, and I noticed the gate had a visitor. Thankfully, I made it in time to meet him. This is Snake. He is the key to the key to opening the gate. You heard that right. I tried to threaten him, but let's be honest, he's gonna mess us up. So we'll have to come back to him later with some faith because my key doesn't look like the one he's asking for. I wasn't getting anywhere with that today, so I decorated my graves with those new fences and set up a spot to cremate bodies that don't make the cut for the graveyard. I then realised I could destroy that sawhorse because the circular saw replaces it. This will free up a little bit of space for later. Then, I spent this evening working out how to get the materials together for the urns. For whatever reason, I decided now was the time I wanted to fish. I dropped into the dead horse to sell my burial certificates and buy some fish sticks to help me. I returned to that fishing spot I tried the other day, and this time I was determined to actually come away with some fish. The bite animation is very subtle, but I actually noticed it this time. The minigame is much like Stardew, but so far it's easier, and I think I remember someone saying that once you first hook the fish, you shouldn't lose it. Don't quote me on that. I fished into the night to secure a few catches so I could come home to prep some fillets for those quests. Trouble is, these don't give quality fillets. To get those, I need different fish, which I can only catch with bait. I cut them up anyway though, because I might as well now turn these into food. Like a lot of things though, I had to get some sleep to be able to finish the job. After baking some fish on day 36, I made some jugs which will be made into urns, and made some more grave fences too. My next batch of crops was ready so I tended to that, and once I repaired another grave, those jugs were just about done so I could set off a second batch. On day 37 I made heaps of firewood to supply me with fuel for a good while, then rushed over to the church to get in my weekly prayer since we were once again out of faith. Sunday can never come soon enough. With that important task checked off my list, I pulled up every flower I saw near my home. No flower was safe. I was doing this because this is how you gather bugs. 
These are used for fishing bait, but I need to do this later because I was really after moss. I explored this cliff overlooking my home, and it looks like this used to be a beekeeping setup, which has definitely seen better days, so I tidied up the place in exchange for some red points. This got me past sunset, so now I could hunt for moths with the few remaining flowers nearby. But that night, I also didn't want to miss my chance to convince Snake to work with me with my freshly acquired faith. Here is where he gave me the instructions for the key, which I took to my study table, but surprise surprise, I'm out of faith again. On day 38, I dropped into the Dead Horse Tavern to get a cutscene with this singer. I went to introduce myself and she seemed oh so pleased to meet me. And actually, she asked me to come back later another time, once I show her I'm actually worth talking to. I wanted to leave because that was very rude and embarrassing, but I was summoned by this guy. He asked me about that interaction, so I told him the truth. This guy is a poet, and he wanted to read a poem to Miss Charm over there, but he was out of paper and ink to be able to write it, so he asked me to help with that. This automatically unlocked the journalist perk, which means I can get stories out in the world. You'll see why this is useful later, but this is the point we find out about being able to buy things from the astrologer, so we'll have to try again soon. I took a detour on my way home to the farm and asked the farmer for some advice. He pretty much told me to stop farming and buy his vegetables, but he taught me a few recipes I can make with them. Obviously, I didn't want to buy his vegetables, but I did buy myself more seeds, then got back just in time for a fresh new body. On this day, I unlocked the tech to remove more organs and gave it a go because these give me more items to study. The result of this was just two white skulls and no red, so I buried it anyway, though I probably should have burned it. Then, that night, I made some more grave decorations because I was pretty much out. In the early hours of day 39, I hunted for more moths for the lighthouse keeper quest, but I still didn't have enough by the daytime. I switched some stuff out in the graveyard because I still didn't 100% understand how the skulls work, but it did still end up making some sort of difference. Then I got some veggies cooking for the first time, excited to have a reasonably consistent source of food. Then I ended my night adding another corpse to the graveyard. On day 40, I wanted to sell some burial certificates to Haradric and found out I could sell my cooked veggies here too. I didn't do this today because I do need some food for energy. I spent some time getting my head around my ever-growing to-do list, then completely forgot I still don't have the faith to learn to use the key, which I was trying to do today because this is the day that Snake tends to visit, so we're still several days of progressing this part. For now, I just went back to gathering moths. I now had enough of these, so on day 41, I waited outside the lighthouse for the lighthouse keeper to awaken. I handed over the nasty bugs as soon as I could. I really cannot stand moths, but my reward was another fishing rod, so I very much wasted money buying the first one from him before. Thankfully, he does buy these back for a bit less, so at least I didn't lose as much cash this way. Since my mind was already on fishing, I intended to try again with some bait this time to see if I could catch different fish. I also like that the UI here does show the chance to hook each fish, and of course the ones that are still question marks we haven't caught yet. For some reason, it wasn't letting me fish here, so I want to come back later with a different bait. Happy to have an excuse not to fish, I gathered some sticks so I could build a compost heap. This will produce fertilizer for the crops and maggots to fish with. All I have to do is chuck in some crop waste and wait, and whilst I was waiting, I gathered more wood and requested more corpses with carrots. On day 42, we had another little carrot harvest, and then I wanted to cook some apples, but I seem to have forgotten to actually set them to cook. I gathered some more sand a bit closer to home this time, then removed every last thing from my next corpse, so who knows what's actually left in this bag. I also remembered to burn this one instead of bury it, but what's funny is that everything just gets left as a pile on the floor. On day 43, I contain the ashes into an urn, but I do find it kinda unhygienic that we do this in the same place we prepare food. I did my usual Sunday service, then took that shiny new faith straight into the basement to study that key. The gate still wasn't opening though, so it looks like I will definitely have to wait for Snake to return. With my remaining faith for the week, I studied that urn for a bunch of red and blue points. My first lot of compost was ready, so I laid it all in the fields, but I had no seeds to plant with, so I smashed some rocks for the evening because I wanted to see what this stone garden was. It looks cute, and you can use this to meditate, which passes time and restores energy as an alternative to sleeping. It doesn't get rid of the exhaustion debuff though, if you have it, nor does it save the game, so for those reasons, I won't be using this. On day 44, I went on the hunt for more iron, having completely forgotten where I've seen any nodes. I came back to my basement empty-handed and wasted a bunch of time trying to get through this gate for whatever reason, though to be fair, the dialogue does only say we need a key. The loot goblin must know what's behind this gate. This was killing me, but I did walk away eventually. When I finally got my mind off that lock gate, I greeted Donkey with the latest corpse. This time, I removed the blood and the fat, and this removed two of its red skulls, so now this body was definitely up there with some of my best so far. 
Since the grave sites don't really require any resources, I decided to pre-mark loads of them to save me time later. Then I stocked up on yet more stone because we're gonna need piles of the stuff for grave decorations. On day 45, I got working on making those, plus they're also a good source of blue points. I used some of these decorations to upgrade some of the existing graves whilst I was waiting on more bodies, and with some of my excess carrots, I cooked some carrot cutlets. On day 46, I brought some maggots from the compost heap to the fishing spot to try and use. This bait seems to work okay, so let's see what I can catch. The first fish I reeled in was definitely new, and it had a star on it, which was a good sign, so I stuck around to catch a few more, but as soon as I thought I had enough of them, I was out of there. I was relieved to see that these would give me what I needed, but it was annoying having to craft them one at a time. It's Snake's day to visit today. I gave him that key and he dropped a story, then wasted no time in opening that gate. Seems that this was the limit to his courage though, because he asked me to go in first. There were a bunch of rooms at the end of the corridor, but the first one here had that diary I needed. Better go grab it. Is that the diary? That is a good diary. Ah! Are we dead now? You have died. <laughs> okay. That was weird, but we do still need that diary. So I ran straight back and Snake definitely had some questions about what he just witnessed, or more insults than anything. Until of course he realized my immortality could come in useful for some dungeon crawling. I'll give that a go another time, because first I wanted to check out the zombie chain to the wall. This is Gunter, and gonna be honest, I forgot he even had a name till now. He pointed me to a nearby lever to open the gate and have a proper chat with him. He told me about how he was an undead, and as soon as he found out I'm the new graveyard keeper, he told me I could make more just like him, and they should be able to help out around the place. This is graveyard keeper's answer to automation, so looks like we can resurrect corpses now. I learned how to build the resurrection table, and that same rack also has some zombie juice I'll need, so that's all coming with us. Then I headed back to the room with the diary and crept around the edge of the scary death grate to pick up that book. Before leaving the area for the day, I decided I did just want to peek in the dungeon, and I have to say, this is definitely not one of my favourite parts of the game. For now though, I was just happy to be finding loot, though there are obviously monsters here and I am terrible at combat. I ended up spending the entire night exploring and looting, but as soon as I became exhausted, I left because this drains energy so much faster, so safe to say, I slept a lot of day 46 away. When I woke up that evening, I had the next batch of carrots to pull up, then I came back to the dungeon again for the night to clear out the remaining monsters on this first floor, and gather the remaining loot because I could get some good materials this way, and sometimes I'd have some new crop seeds drop too. On day 48, I handed in that diary to the astrologer, which had details about the portal we want to open. He didn't really seem to know much about what anything in the book meant, and all this information went over my head too. But then the diary reached a point where the writing was covered in something sticky, so he asked me to go check the pedestal to find out more about the portal, and to try going into the town, which is not the village, to get hold of some of these portal items. For the diary restoration, looks like we can make the acid, and for the restoration tools, we should check in with someone who has criminal connections. I think we know just the man for the job. I still need his help with the ink and paper too, and now we've unlocked the ability to trade with the astrologer, we can buy a whole bunch of useful things including books which give us tech points. But for now, these are very much out of our budget, so I just brought the ink from him, and a ready-made ink and quill for convenience. I then came to a startling realisation. I hope I haven't had a body out here just rotting away, I just realised. <laughs> yep, this has been laying here since the first time we entered that dungeon, I'm pretty sure. So that's pretty much two white skulls gone to waste. I ended up removing a few parts, and I don't know if it's just me, but I always seem to drop the poor soul at the door here. Oh my god, every si every, literally every time I get to a door it just does that. Please tell me I'm not the only one. I'm also still at a point where I don't fully understand the impact of burying a body of this quality, so I do it anyway, and it only adds one point of quality to my graveyard. I worked on some more paper downstairs since I knew I was soon to be giving some away, then built a trunk in the garden area so I could start storing seeds and stuff here. On day 49, I handed those quality fish fillips to the bishop, then checked again what I was going to need to be able to craft a better prayer, because four faith per week just wasn't cutting it. But obviously, the faith itself is a crafting ingredient too, and I'm aiming for the combo prayer, which has a pretty good balance of money and faith. I worked on a couple of notes, then realised the time, so I rushed to the top to not miss out on this week's prayer, because this will only prolong us making a better one. All I need to do is make sure I don't spend any faith at all this week. I popped to the tavern to deliver the ink and paper to the poet. Now he just needs some inspiration. And where does he want to get that from? Wine, of course. And only the good stuff. In return for silver wine, we could get a silver story. But that doesn't matter to me for the moment, so I headed home to tend to my crops and actually get that trunk built. 
On day 50, I turned all my notes into a chapter in prep for the new prayer. I also did the flies for the witch burning whilst I was here, then a lot of this day went on making materials to build more church decorations in the hopes I can reach that 20 quality mark by next week, and with a new body that evening, I could progress the graveyard a tiny bit too. On day 51, I stocked up on planks to build stuff within the church, and with a better candelabra and a confessional, we made some good progress. I had just one point to go, so I upgraded one more candelabra, and that got us to the 20 we needed, so now we just have to wait for the bishop again. With that done, I got back to the basement to make a book cover because we need to turn that chapter into a book for that prayer. I was then in for another entire night of dungeon crawling, and slayed every monster on level 2 with only just enough health, given my reckless combat style. It was day 52 when I exited the dungeon, so Snake was here. I chatted to him about trying to get me some illegal items. I asked for those restoration tools for that diary, but he wasn't even willing to take my money, so I'll just have to carry on working on those dungeon items he wants at some point. This will be the way forward. Given that I almost died, I avoided that task for today to make some more grave decorations and got some sleep so I could heal. On day 53, I wanted to meet the Inquisitor on Witch Hill, but I got stopped by a guard when I got there. Sounds like they were waiting for some cultists or something, and I'm definitely not a cultist. I don't think I could convince them though, so I better not check the portal with them around. The Inquisitor made it over by this point, so I handed over the firewood and the flyers, and he asked me to stay for today's witch burning, where it was very clear that the crowd here was pretty bored. He had a new task for me. To help motivate the guards to work harder and to make this more of an event, he gave me the right to use the nearby vineyard to grow grapes so I can make him some wine, and it's got to be silver quality. He also gave me permission to use the left hand side of the graveyard which has been previously blocked off. From there, I headed to the vineyard to begin restoring it, and unlocked the tech I needed to grow grapes. Not that I had any seeds yet. I tried to remedy this by visiting the farmer's shop, but he didn't sell anything, so I was guessing I need to wait for the merchant to visit in a couple of days. Either that, or it was locked behind a higher friendship level, so I did buy a few seeds, but I had barely any money, so this barely made a dent. I sold my burial certificates to replenish the money I just spent, then came home to work on the next corpse, which ended up being a pretty good one. Once I got that buried, I unlocked the new section of the graveyard with the permission we just got. On day 54, I found out the confessional is not purely decorative. We get faith when someone's using it. I wanted to make more dungeon progress today, where I found my first bugs. These drop alchemy powders, but for the most part, I was looking for better crop seeds. I did also want the items for Snake, but I wasn't finding these today because my health got really low. I managed to escape in one piece to tend to my farm instead. On day 55, I let the bishop know how much better the church was looking, but to be able to upgrade it to a bigger church, I will need a building permit from the mailbox. This will set us back 20 silver, which I definitely don't have yet. Gotta spend money to make money, I guess. I did my weekly prayer with my biggest turnout yet, meaning I got 6 faith instead of the usual 4. Now I could craft the combo prayer, which should get us even more faith next week. Today's body got a bit rancid by the time I could get to it, and it was a pretty terrible one to begin with too, so I salvaged some parts and set up a place to cremate it because we don't want this one hindering the progress on our graveyard. Before I went to bed that night, I made some sauerkraut, which is pretty gross because the salt has definitely come from another burnt body. On day 56, I was greeted with more crops to harvest. Then I went to have another look at the blockage just north of my home because this was also where there may be a new zombie for us to dig up here. I had to craft up some of the materials, but I managed to clear everything up that night and this unlocked the tech for a zombie sawmill, which exited my mind as quick as it entered. But for now, I was freaking out about this zombie. What do I do with you? Where do I go with you? What do I do? Um... I literally carried it around with me for ages trying to figure out what to do, which took up the entire night. I'm being dumb. I am being dumb. What am I doing? How am I- where- <laughs> where does this go? Then on day 57, I repaired this blueprint station which gave me the ability to build that resurrection table, and this is where I found out about the other side of the corpse hatch which still needs repairs. I grabbed the materials to get both things built, then tried to slap the zombie on the new table which didn't seem to work. This is when I figured out I'm gonna need a regular corpse, so this one will remain chilling down here in the fetal position until I find a place for it. I went back to exploring that north path and found this giant tree with a very informative hint, but I didn't really take in what it was asking me, so I left to see if there was anything else I needed to find around this area, but I didn't find anything interesting today. I wanted to see if any of the iron had respawned near home, but there were some bats because it was night time, and they definitely got the better of me tonight, resulting in a ridiculously dramatic death, but I still managed to come back later for a couple of iron notes. On day 58, I unlocked the tech for better weapons and armour, in the hope I can survive the dungeons a little easier. 
I visited Dig to buy some hemp ropes because I'm gonna need them to craft my new gear. Then I sold off some stuff to Haradric at the Dead Horse to keep on top of working towards the church upgrade. I came home to craft myself a shiny new sword, but for the armor, I wasn't impressed to see what was missing. I'm gonna be wearing other people's skin. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm definitely still a few corpses short, so I better go pay that donkey. On day 59, I upgraded another grave, which I didn't realize was completely pointless because the max score for this body is only one. Don't do this. That's an entire decoration wasted. But on the bright side, I collected another bonus faith from the confessional today. I did a bit of woodwork because I wanted to build the alchemy rack, but I did wish we could just craft a regular trunk because those are a fair amount cheaper. In hindsight as well, I will also regret the spot that I put it in. This space could have been much better used with something else. I skinned the next corpse for my armor, just two more to go. And once again, I did bury this rubbish body, but it's by no means my worst one in here. Coming into day 60, I did the conga with some logs before tending to my farmer duties again because carrots are a hot commodity, not just for the donkey, but for me too as a reliable energy source. Even though I didn't have my armor yet, I wanted to test out my new sword, but the donkey had other plans. Ugh, a body. Damn it. <laughs> This was actually directly working towards the armor though because more bodies, more skin, and it's still very slightly chipped away at the quality score for the graveyard. On day 61, I cleared the blockage between the church basement and the morgue because this is sort of like one big shortcut tunnel. I was excited to test out the shiny new combo prayer today, which resulted in 7 faith this time, and that number will only grow with the church. The donations weren't half bad either. With my main job now done for the week, I wanted to try the dungeon again, but I was still getting pretty messed up with my mindless slashing. This meant I had to leave way before I could clear the floor. I studied some organs in the basement instead, looking for some extra blue points, and these intestines give you a lot of them. On day 62, I cooked up another batch of carrot cutlets because I decided I wanted to sell off the ones I had. They aren't worth much on their own, but I had a lot of them, so I can get some alright money back. What I didn't notice yet at this point is the price goes down the more you provide, which makes sense. Supply and demand and stuff, but at this moment I'm just happy enough selling them off because I have basically an endless supply of the stuff. This funded loads more seeds from the farmer. I was really enjoying some farming in this game, and of course I got everything I could planted when I got home. I ordered some more corpses from the donkey, then I spent the night making some more gravestones and fences. On day 63 I woke up to loads of carrot cutlets, then found loads more carrots in the field waiting for me. I was excited to buy that building permission, but I was just a few copper short after buying a few too many seeds yesterday, so for now I turned my attention to gathering more stone for more grave decorations again. I skinned the next body and removed a couple of other bits, then chucked it in a grave with some decorations, but yet again, this one really should have been cremated. On day 64, I finally got around to crafting my new armour, so now I'll be wearing four other people. I sold off another 50 carrot cutlets which will get me what I need for that building permission, and they ended up having to take a second trip out there right after because I forgot to buy some wine for Jerry, since I had enough money for this too. The Silver Star wine was not good enough, not enough alcohol apparently. He didn't seem to want anything else though, so it was back to stone smacking for me. After a quick evening nap, the next donkey delivery arrived, and once I removed the blood and the fat, this shaped out to be not a bad body at all much more of an asset to my graveyard. Then this night was another one for the dungeons because I was craving some loot again. Look at all of that. I even made it to the next floor the next morning, but there was a scary new metallic enemy which absolutely messed me up. I can't just run from these either because I need some of the stuff they drop for Mr. Snake and these dungeons behave a bit like infested floors in Stardew where you have to kill every single enemy. I tended to the next batch of crops because working with plants is very healing and this psyched me up for a rematch with that armoured foe. I got through much easier this time. With a few more enemies, I started to get overconfident because that night I got overrun and died again by a slime of all things. No! Damn it! Not by the slime! This didn't stop me from giving it another go on day 66, going back to the old hack and slash, but I left a few more monsters on the floor because my health got low and I didn't want to die a third time in a row, so I salvaged some materials from the broken furniture here and made my way out to sleep off all the injuries. On day 67, I bought that building permission, giving it straight to the bishop, and in an instant our church got a major glow up, but according to this guy, I need to be a rightful citizen to perform service in this church. Lucky for me, I already have that status, I just needed to actually pay for it, so I beelined to the tavern to get some quick cash from the burial certificates and food. I wanted to take care of those rightful citizen papers today whilst the bishop was still around, so I don't have to miss out on our weekly prayer, only to find out it was all for nothing. 
The next upgrade will be to turn this into a cathedral, which needs us to have a much higher quality rating than what we have right now. At first, the bishop said 50 for the church, which sounds reasonable, but 800 for the graveyard? Absolutely not. I dug in my heels on that one, so he agreed a high but more reasonable 200 quality rating. This was for his benefit too, since the town's cathedral had collapsed in the Great Blast. That was a lot of talking, and now I had to talk some more because it was time for the weekly service. Then I returned to my house to start cooking a ridiculous 100 carrot cutlets. This is when I started going for some of the pricier options in the tech tree because if we have any hope of reaching those quality goals, I'm gonna need better decorations and better materials. But for tonight, I ended up just working on our frequently used iron parts. It was a lovely morning of farming on day 68 and collecting the steady stream of carrots coming out of my oven. I then fixed up the fence around the graveyard to make it slightly less uninviting and this added a whole 10 quality points. I also built a trunk inside the church to house the building materials for any projects inside here. This means I won't have to cart it back and forth from the house. I got to test this out immediately on a brand new church shrine which added a significant amount of points. This used up most of my iron parts, so it was time to make some more, getting done just after a new body arrived. This is one of few that I managed to have no red skulls at all by the time I was done with it. This was now tied for the highest scoring grave in the graveyard. On day 69, I chopped down some trees now that I was getting low on wood, turning some of it straight into building materials when the log stores got full. I started a second compost heap to double my output. Then I decided on putting a second church shrine opposite the first because these add 5 points each. And I placed my first wall candelabra now that I actually could. You can see the spots marked out for them. I didn't forget about the outside today either, placing my first flower beds which also have pre-marked spots. Another body arrived by then, and it wasn't a very good one, so I ripped out some parts and set it alight so as to not ruin the graveyard progress. On day 70, I let the remnants of that body follow me home so I could get the ashes into an urn. I also used the salt to make some more sauerkraut, all of which got sold immediately along with a quantity of carrots, and sprinkling in a few beet slices for good measure. Hopefully the pub goers won't tire of grilled veggies anytime soon. Can't forget about the burial certificates either. I then proceeded to waste half the day looking north of my home again, finding nothing new of interest, but eventually I made my way over to the swamp that evening to gather a bunch of iron, coming home with 37 ore that night, which should keep us going for a little while. A field full of crops was a great way to wake up on day 71. Half my day was taken up replanting all of that, then I wanted to check out what I'd need to clear out the blockage above my swamp. Pretty much just the usual stuff. I wasn't going to leave the area without bringing more iron ore with me, but I did go home that evening to prepare the materials and break through the blockage that night. I found what looked like an abandoned miner's house, and we can even sleep here which is cool. Right outside was a blueprint table that needed some fixing, and this gives us a clue of how to utilise the area. There are spaces to build a marble quarry and a stone quarry here for unlimited supplies, and this little mine here we can't enter, but we may be able to get help from others that don't need to breathe. My last major find for this area was this coal deposit here. It doesn't take much mining to get loads of the stuff, and it's far better fuel than the firewood we've been using, so I definitely made sure to fill up on this a bit, or at least until my pickaxe broke. Oh, and there's actually an iron one too. The cherry on top is that we can use the teleport stone to fast travel here. On day 72, I worked on the next set of iron parts now that some of the bars had finished smelting. Then I got the marble quarry set up because I'd never collected this material before. To be able to collect the big chunks of rock, I need to provide wooden wedges, but each chunk will give us six pieces, so it's worth it for sure. Back at home, I began collating the materials for the rest of the day to build some things out by the quarry. On day 73, I sold off a buttload of cooked veggies and dropped off loads of wooden wedges at the quarry, so I could begin gathering stone. I also set some up for marble too. I built a trunk to store some building materials for later, then thought it might be best to tend to my Sunday duties early in the day. I put down another church shrine first to see if I could get even more out of my weekly prayer, and whilst in the basement fetching that prayer, I allowed myself a productive distraction of studying some zombie juice for some tech points. When I actually got to the weekly service, I gained a whole 12 faith this time, so I was building up a good supply of the stuff. Some of that faith got used immediately for studying more items, then my evening was for stocking up on various building materials. Day 74 started by the furnace, smelting up some of my abundance of iron ore. Then I got on with the rainy crop harvest so that the donkey could take some fresh carrots, and also so I could add some more cooked ones to the already very overstocked tavern. The rest of my day passed down in the dungeon, fighting more mobs for loot, and even found my first blue slimes which are a little bit more powerful than the green. I was thankful to have found the odd health potion here and there because it meant I could stay in here a bit longer, though I still had to make my way out that night. 
I came back in perfect time to deal with the next corpse on day 75 since it was starting to rot. Not an amazing one either, but I got it to 5 white skulls so I buried it anyway because it was still one of my better ones. After cooking up some more beetroot, I made a start on removing all the dead trees and foliage from the west side of the graveyard. Then I realised how much of a pain it's going to be taking all this wood back home, so honestly, most of it will stay over there for now. Donkey came with another body that evening, which had too many sins for my liking, so I harvested some parts and allowed it to burn. On day 76, I set off another batch of carrots for cooking, knowing that I have more on the way in the field. I figured out I hadn't studied a couple more body parts yet, so I worked on that for some blue points, and this should actually be all of them covered now. I carried back a log when I went to grab all the ash, which went straight into an urn, then mustered up the motivation to fumble my way through getting these logs back home, but it did get to a point where I gave up and just ran back and forth with them one by one. The sun had set by the time I was done with that, which was when I teleported to the quarry to smash up the cliffs for some stone blocks, which I'm gonna need a way to transport home easily, but for now, I can just teleport home with them one by one. On day 77, I grabbed the next carrots and beets before crafting even more iron parts. I am constantly running out of these. My chat let me know today that the zombies can actually craft some stuff for me if I place them at a crafting table, so I queued up a whole bunch of stuff and left it to do its thing. This freed up time to go smash up the cliff face some more, but I came back that night once the next corpse arrived because I wanted to resurrect this one. I did have to go retrieve some faith from my chest because each resurrection will cost 10, but what I find the funniest is the way the zombie just shoots off the table afterwards. I dropped this one up at the quarry house because I needed to collect some more materials at home, but first I get some sleep. On day 78, I sold off a small variety of stuff to Haradric and added to his hilarious amount of carrot cutlets. I returned to the quarry to build a porter station, so now this zombie's job will be to transport all the stone and stuff home. To do that though, I need to build a stone stockpile so it knows where to take them from, and as soon as I loaded one up, it was off with a delivery. I filled the whole thing up, then I opted to break down some blocks myself because there were still quite a few on the ground that didn't fit. I also mined out my first marble, which I also loaded up on the stockpile. Another corpse arrived that night which I didn't zombify this time because I wanted to make progress with the graveyard. On day 79, I filled in the remaining slots that could fit the wall candelabras for the extra church quality points, then got on with this week's sermon, once again increasing the amount of faith we gained versus last time. I asked my assistant to make me some more iron parts whilst I worked on some wooden beams myself, then once I had a little evening nap, I asked it to craft some gravestones for me so I can work on some iron parts myself. These went towards more church decorations on day 80, so now I filled up all the possible space. I unlocked a perk that should make ore smelting a bit more efficient with the sheer amount we're going through these days, then it was time for the next round of farm crops, and the next big carrot sale. I'm surprised Haradric still wants to buy these from me. Look at them all! Overnight, I chopped a bit of wood, then on day 81, I got round to visiting the merchant for the first time in a while, and I found out this is how I can get hold of those grape seeds, so I bought all the ones he had. I was excited to be finally getting these planted at the vineyard. We're officially on our way to producing wine. I requested more bodies from the donkey, still have no idea how he knows these carrots are there. Then I tried going back to the vineyard to add some compost after the fact, but you can't do this. Complete waste of time on my part. On day 82, I upgraded my furnace to the second tier, which I've been meaning to do for quite some time. This will give me the ability to smelt steel, but to be able to do that, I need graphite, which I was having a hard time figuring out how to do. I ignored that for now to dig up some of the ugly overgrown bushes in the graveyard. Then I wanted to check what it was that Snake needed again. So I fetched them from the church cellar and ran straight back, only to bump into him on his way home for the night. No! No! Why? I skinned the newest body instead and added it to my collection. Then I wanted to build a better stone cutter, but I ran out of space. Since I still hadn't figured out that I can expand the yard, I demolished the old stone cutter and the pottery wheel. This new one is large and in charge. On day 83, I found the tech I needed for graphite. I think I can forgive myself for not looking for it with the precious metals. The tech unlocks I now have my eye on were getting pretty expensive, so I spent most of today in the church basement studying my equipment for a ton of red points. The next thing I wanted to prioritise was some better grave decorations, so I don't top out at 4 points per grave, then I resurfaced again to smelt my iron scrap into something more usable. I received another corpse to add to the graveyard, but like its neighbour, it only had a gravestone for the time being because I keep forgetting to craft more fences, and inside the church, I upgraded one of the last basic candelabras to a better one. Anything to try get me some extra points. On day 84, I made my first chisel so I could craft some better stone items out of polished stone. Now I can make slightly fancier grave fences. My stone stockpile was now clogged with marble, so I unlocked the tech for marble quarrying since I apparently didn't know how to break down the blocks into usable pieces. 
Once I cleared out the stockpile, I got back to making more of the new grave decorations I just unlocked, and I was pleased to be getting more blue points this way too. Then, that evening, I added the new grave fences to the unfinished graves for a good little boost in quality. Day 85 started with selling some stuff off to the tavern for a bit of extra money, followed by some candle making in the basement because this was the day I discovered that, shock horror, these actually go into the candelabras. They had extra quality points too. Who would have thought? But anyway, this got me to the 50 points I needed to meet the bishop's requirements. He told me this place was now ready to become a cathedral. Not that this was actually happening just yet because I still have a long way to go with the graveyard. The church was looking extra crowded for this week's prayer, meaning we got plenty of faith and of course donations. That job's now sorted so I could get my first graphite smelted because I was still yet to produce any steel. Then I harvested a few more crops that have definitely just been sitting here for a while. I'd calmed down a bit with these because of the sheer amount I was accumulating, and at this point I realised that they were becoming worth less and less to sell at the tavern. On day 86 I mined some more iron at the quarry, which also drops as these big old slabs, but to get these sent home I'll have to build a specific iron stockpile. I gathered some more coal whilst I was up there, but then my pickaxe actually broke, so I returned home because I have more than enough coal for now anyway. For most of this day, I ended up just loosely planning what I wanted to do with the place next, so I unlocked the zombie farm on my long road to a bit of automation, and worked on my never-ending demand for iron parts. I just slept and there's a body. On day 87, I had to run and tend to a corpse I'd forgotten about for a bit. Luckily, it wasn't looking too worse for wear when I got to it. That's another few points for the graveyard, but once again, I was out of fences for now. I was also low on red points, so I got to studying for a while, until I was out of paper for science points. It's easy enough to rectify that though, because I had plenty of bat wings to turn into pigskin paper, then you can just convert that into clean paper. With a hint from stream chat, I at long last expanded the yard space, which makes way more sense now. Look at all this space! Oh my god! I'm pleased, can you tell? I also used some of those fresh red points to unlock better tools, as well as the ability to make our own wine. Day 88 and I harvested my first grapes, but I didn't get quite as many seeds back to replant. I actually managed to get those nails over to Snake today before he left, but I still owe him a bucket of blood, which I haven't even come across yet. I'm not fussed about that at this point though, because I wanted to check out what I'd need to make wine down here, and the materials don't look bad at all, so I got right to work on those that evening, but I did end up first building a chest here at the vineyard to keep some seeds and compost. Now I won't have to run back and forth quite so much. I then worked through the night building this big old zombie farm, and had a quick look through how it worked. We need to insert quite a lot of seeds, but we do get more crops out of it, and we can upgrade it later for better quality crops too. I did still plan to farm some crops myself as well, to boost the output and to have another source for green tech points. The farming continued into day 89 because I ran out of energy last night. I grabbed some extra faith from a visit to the confessional on my way to the carrot drop off box because I'm going to need some corpses to hire. Whilst waiting for those to arrive, I wanted to check what I'll need to upgrade my tools, but that won't happen without a better anvil, which I'm currently short on steel for. I gotta wait for that to smelt too, so I popped over to the farmer to buy all of his carrot seeds in prep for the zombie farm, because that's what I'll be growing in there. In the end, I just took that very first zombie we got, and plonked it on the farm to start growing me some carrots, because it just sat idle in the crafting area most of the time anyway. On day 90, I upgraded the anvil to that second tier, so now I can make steel stuff. I only have enough steel to make one tool at the moment, so I decided on the pickaxe, because this will help with gathering the materials for the rest. From there, it was up to the quarry to build that iron stockpile so I could start getting this stuff sent home. I teleported straight thereafter so that I could build an iron stockpile in my yard, otherwise the zombie won't have anywhere to put the block it's currently carrying. I spent some of my afternoon at my stone cutter. Still haven't made any grey fences, but then another bar of steel distracted me because I was excited to make a shiny new axe. I had enough for a shovel too. I tried selling my old iron ones to Creswold, but he was simply not interested, so I begrudgingly store these in a chest where they take up room that could have been used for loot. Not gonna lie, I'm pleased to see myself now finally making some grey fences tonight, so at least we're getting everything ready for the next few corpses. On day 91, I checked the morgue to find this very decomposed body waiting for me. The smell as I entered the room gave it away. I considered resurrecting it, but this was way too rotten, so I harvested some stuff from it then set it ablaze because I really can't bury this one. I used up all my candles today to try and boost the points for the weekly service, which meant we got so much faith I ended up absorbing some of it whilst just standing there. 18 we got this week. I think we got more money too, but I've not really been paying much attention to this. I decided on building the winemaking machines today, so I could find out that I was going to need 15 grapes for a single pail of juice, but also I can make oil here too. 
A barrel of wine will need two pails of juice, so in total, I'm gonna need 30 bunches of grapes to start on my first batch. I don't have enough grapes right now, so I just turned some fat into oil, which I can use to cook and craft with, then paid a quick visit to the quarry to move my transport zombie to the mines. Not realizing, I need to build something here first. I picked up all the materials to get it built on day 92, so now I can put this zombie to work. I did another sell off at the tavern, then chose to resurrect the next corpse that arrived that day, even if it wasn't the best quality. This will now be my quarry courier. Probably gonna be very, very slow. Whilst I was waiting for the miner zombie to get some stuff, I gathered some iron for myself for a bit of a head start because I really wanted to start more iron smelting now. Day 93 was merchant day, so I popped over to him that morning to top up on grape seeds because I seemed to get less back than I planned. I only got silver ones for now, but I also spotted that he was selling silk, so I picked up four because it's quite expensive. So now I've got this ready to upgrade two church benches. I got some more grapes planted up, then checked on the other materials for the church bench upgrade and the jointing here I haven't even unlocked yet. I'll handle that another time because we just got another corpse. I improved some of what I could on this one, then resurrected it, but it's going to stay on the floor till I find it a job, instead opting to craft some more paper. On day 94 I studied the new grave decorations we made recently for some much needed blue points. I also found out I could have crafted that bucket of blood the whole time. I know I'm a dingus and all, but there's just so much in this game, it's so easy to miss stuff. I'm sure you can forgive me, right? This did work out well though, because Snake is actually here today, so I could give it straight to him. Now that Snake had everything he needed, he wanted me to witness the first summoning. I did try to leave, but I'd rather not be punished. He chanted some nonsense, and I'm not sure this went as he expected. It's a chicken. It's a chicken. It's a frickin' chicken. <laughs> Seems like the scroll vendor did him dirty. He needed the spell from the original book, and I think the astrologer will be our best bet for that. Specifically, he was looking for the Necronomicon from the university library, so I'll check in with the astrologer next moon day. Before we parted ways, I asked him about the royal stamp, and he just went ahead and gave it to me. I bolted off to locate my meat and took it straight to the tavern to show Haradric, so now I'll be able to wrap the meat on my kitchen table and prep to sell. After setting off some steel, I did just that, packaging up every portion of meat I saved for the evening, then selling them that night for an extra four silver. When I got home again, I noticed that the zombie had finished its first batch of carrots, so I set off another. This automation was feeling good. On day 85, I built a second furnace to speed up the smelting output and turned all of my glass into flasks in prep for future alchemy tables. I broke down all of the iron and stone blocks that have been delivered before crafting some even fancier grave decorations, which obviously I can put on my graves, but more importantly, these were new ones I'd not studied yet. A new donkey delivery arrived when I was on my way down to the church basement, so I wanted to sort the new corpse first before it rots, but I did seem to have made a mistake. It took me some time to realise, and I was so confused. Wait, you're missing so many parts. That's weird. <laughs> you're a zombie. I just took the meat out of a zombie. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Can I, I'm going to put it back. <laughs> I do apologize. <laughs> I worked on the correct body and it got buried even though it's not very good. Then I planned for a whole night of studying, but I ran out of faith. I was off to the astrologer as soon as I woke up on day 96, but I couldn't even ask about the Necronomicon until I come back with some items that will help him. One of them I need to get from Snake, but I can't get that till I get him the Necronomicon, so I must be missing something somehow. Seems I got distracted from wrapping up some more meat at some point, so I finished that off. Then I added some decorations to that grave, even though some of the points will end up wasted. I received and buried another five skull body that night though, so that one will be a bit better. I rounded off this day by selling the freshly wrapped meat, which is worth a bit less this time because the more Haradric already has, the less they're worth to sell. Day 97 started with a pretty crowded church service. I've been waiting for this, having been short of faith again. With another 16, I should be able to study a few more things, and I prioritised the grave decorations I wanted to do the other day. So many blue points! I built a hand mixer, and my first alchemy table, but I took one look at how it works and got overwhelmed because if you don't have a recipe, you sort of just have to guess. I harvested my next batch of grapes in the foggy dark, and I was pleased to be able to replant a similar amount this time thanks to the compost. This meant I now had enough grapes to make some juice. I put two silver star juices into the barrel, but it's looking like it's not guaranteed to give us silver star wine, so let's just see what comes out once it's done fermenting. With some of my remaining faith for the week, I chose to study this carved stone and it gave me a wild amount of red points. Most of the tech I need cost hundreds of these now, so I really needed the boost. These were used to unlock iron castings, as I'd recently unlocked steel weapons and I needed these to craft them. To do that, I need to upgrade a furnace to level 3, which I luckily already had the parts for. 
With the armor though, I need a better carpenter's table, but surprise surprise, I'm short on mainly red points again. Having just smelted some new steel parts, I could still craft a shiny new sword for now, so day 98 was for testing it out in the dungeon. Looking at all the damage I'm taking, I probably should have waited for the armor too, or maybe I should just get good. Today I came across my first silver node, and somehow I managed to clear out all of the monsters on this floor in one piece. Ooh, a chest! <gasps> What's in it? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. I've never been more of a disappointed loot goblin than in this moment right here. I stepped out to the church cellar to drop off some stuff for my very full inventory, then went right back in to check out the 6th level. Now we have fire bats to contend with, which leave a burning trail. Lovely. Something that helped me out a lot here was the batch of wine from that barrel, which only came out at bronze, but this actually restores health, so I might as well make use of it. It makes being down here a lot more survivable. The whole of day 99 was spent dungeon crawling too, successfully clearing out that next floor by the next morning. On day 100, I ordered even more carrots from my zombie farmer and sold off a few spare bottles of wine whilst at the tavern selling meat. I gathered a whole bunch of sand from the river which will mostly go towards glass for more flasks and at this point you'd expect I'd be wrapping things up but the day counter on graveyard keeper's save screen seems to be more like a day behind so hey you get a bonus day. On day 101 I wanted to check out the town that everyone's been talking about. I presented this guard here with a town pass and made my way through only to get struck by lightning. Uh... <laughs> what? Jerry met me by my bed, and we shared in our confusion. Seems like some higher power really doesn't want me getting to that town. This is really annoying, because I need to get some magic items there to get home to my love, but thankfully we have the smuggler snake, so I need to chat with him. My next order of business though was to buy a trade license from the church mailbox since I've been accumulating the money, and now this is ready for whenever the merchant visits, or whenever I remember to go. In prep for the next 100 days, I dumped a load of carrots in the box for the donkey, so now we have a queue of bodies to come. Then I built a few more flower beds for a last minute boost in graveyard points. I also swapped out some grave decorations because I was determined to end this video on at least 100 graveyard quality. At 101, I clearly went the extra mile, so now I could go to bed happy. So there are our first 101 days in Graveyard Keeper. I really do feel like this game embodies the whole cozy with a touch of chaos vibe, at least in my opinion. What do you guys think? As I mentioned in the intro, I went into this as a complete noob with the aim of discovery and exploration. Streams have already been taking place for the 200 days video, and the VODs can be found in the playlist in the description. We've now added the DLCs, which have been adding such a fun twist to the gameplay, so make sure your notifications are on if you want to come and hang out for those. It'll also mean that you won't miss the 200 days premiere too. Please leave a like if you've enjoyed this experience with me. I'm loving the gameplay personally, and I'm excited to get more into it, and leave your best early game tips in the comments because I know for a fact I went so wrong in so many places. Thank you so much to my channel members, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!